topic on Twitter this week that uh, generated a lot more comments than I expected. This is not a new story. This has actually been happening uh, the whole 23 years I've been in Japan. This, this has been a story, constant story, but it has been an increasing trend that there are uh, fewer and fewer and fewer Japanese people who want to live or work or, you know, study abroad. And I suppose particularly, um, I, I, I guess where it really seemed to resonate when I when I posted this and I made the comment that, yeah, this is definitely a pronounced trend in the 1990s. Maybe it was partly my perception of the world. I, I lived in New Zealand and I associated with a lot of Japanese who studied abroad. And when I first came to Japan, all the Japanese that I knew were people who had studied abroad. So my social surroundings were also surrounded by a lot of Japanese people who had gone overseas to go into university and come back to Japan. So I saw a lot of people like that. But it is certainly a trend in society as well that those people um, that save and scrimp and, you know, try to, trying to get out of Japan and trying to go overseas or people who get sent overseas by their parents because they didn't get into a good university in Japan or as some way to get ahead of the game or whatever just isn't happening so much anymore. And it seems to coincide. It definitely, it was a big deal during the bubble. It was sort of a way to going to a prestigious American university or something like that was a way to get into a good job at a bank or something like that. So when people were going for lifetime employment at big companies and when it was a real rat race and whatever, uh, in, in terms of uh, the, the old Japanese, you know, bubble economy, um, yeah, going overseas was sort of a big deal. And a lot of people would do it either to, to do better in the rat race in Japan or to escape the rat race in Japan. I mean, either way, there was an incentive to go overseas and it was really common, um, certainly up through the 1990s, even when the bubble burst, there were still a lot of people that were going overseas for different reasons. And it was pretty common. Um, and it, it really just doesn't happen so much anymore. I think where it, where it resonated with a lot of people on Twitter who were talking about this was uh, particularly among English teachers that find it difficult enough as it is to uh, motivate their students to show an interest in English. Uh, obviously, if you're a teacher, the, the main reason that you'd uh, want to encourage people to learn English is if you learn English, you can travel. You can go, you know, travel the world and, you know, enjoy it and so on. Think of all the interesting conversations you can have with people all over the world. And as much as you'd want to say that to excite people and motivate people, of course, it's hard when the subject's being rammed down the throat, you know, like uh, the same as math or, uh, you know, history or geometry or something like that. You know, it's something that kids are forced to do. They're not given the option to choose to do it. So, you know, keeping them motivated is hard to do. And, you know, it's, it's even harder when the students have no aspiration at all to actually use the language and are totally demotivated from, from going abroad. And there was lots of comments reacting to the story on Twitter talking about, yeah, students, it's the education system that crushes their spirits. And that's why they don't want to go overseas. And I thought, well, yeah, maybe. But at the same time, I don't think the education system is any less crushing now than it was during the 1980s and 90s. In fact, if anything, it's probably gotten better. But uh, yeah, so I'm sure that's a part of it, but it's obviously um, not the reason. Um, and yeah, yeah, different theories came up and my amateur psychology theory on it is, well, one, um, the the obvious benefits of going abroad for the idea of getting ahead and coming back uh, haven't played out so much anymore. Um, you know, when you're in a when you're in a country that's being depopulated, where there are more jobs available than there are people, generally speaking, a pandemic aside, um, there's no real uh, perceived advantage. And when when the lifetime employment thing is out the window, the the idea of getting into a big trading house. As something like that as a, as, a, as a top job when the top jobs that people want to be a youtubers then why would you go and spend two or three years in america <laughs> there's no advantage to that i think the other thing that i often talk about on this channel is just how even as the japanese economy declines it's also been kind of successful uh too successful at just making its people comfortable um and and anything that uh hints at struggle or, uh, you know, loss of comfort, you know, marriage, relationships, living with people. I think going overseas is a bit like that as well. Um, people just have very comfortable, settled lives um, where, yeah, it, it just adds trouble and complication with no clear benefit that people can see. Now, obviously, here as an immigrant myself, I, of course, I think there are benefits to going overseas. In fact, I remember I, I used to have the idea that... Uh, Instead of, you know, if, if Japan's considering bringing back conscription, which I'd read about, I'd sometimes say rather than conscription, we well, have to pay to feed, clothe, you know, give salaries to people or whatever for, for the period of the, the military service, you know, two or three years. 
pay for them to go overseas for two to three years, pay the, pay them a salary, pay their, their living costs overseas. You'll have a better educated, more worldly population that will do better, you know, for the same cost. You'll actually get better money back, <laughs> better value for your money spent on sending people away than having them serve in military service. But um, yeah, that, that sort of thinking is going out the window. And in a way, I put in the title tonight, Hikikomori Nation. I do wonder if it's... Uh, if, if it's not only uh, an over over comfort doing nothing staying at home uh, combined with you know a fear of going out into the world as well like nothing but sort of trouble and whatever there is a kind of a a thing across the society here um, i've always said japan is an awesome place to be single to live in a you know to live in a mini spaceship apartment but it can be lonely but you know there's any number of things to do when you go out um, and the reason I think so many foreigners are coming to Japan is they're discovering the same thing is validating Japanese views of themselves that they're in a pretty comfortable place to live which I think Japan is um, but at the same time you know it's it's obviously not in Japan's long-term interest to, to have people that are not engaged or understanding or motivated to understand the rest of the world so it is a troublesome trend which I, I, I do think the government should actually as a matter of policy try to reverse but it is pronounced and I don't just blame the education system for it. I think the whole society has just sort of made it. They've just it's just become a very comfortable house to stay at home and never leave. You know, the whole country has just become like a, a a bit of a shut-in sort of a culture. Is my take on it.